Welcome back, everybody, to the channel. Here to recap Steelers, Bengals, an absolute beatdown. The Steelers finally got a win, and it was a good one to get, uh, not just because it keeps their very slim playoff chances alive, but just mainly from a vibe standpoint, man. Like the, you know, the three-game losing streak, I feel like a lot of the fan base, everybody's really been down about just the way that they have performed, the way that they played in recent weeks. Uh, and to come out in front of the home fans, you know, uh, the season finale at Akershire Stadium, Final home game played really well, man. And I, especially against a division opponent, Cincinnati, who was previously, you know, vying for kind of a wild card spot. And this was a game that they absolutely had to have. I thought that they were going to come in uh, really desperate, uh, just like the Steelers were, but they took care of business, man. And I thought that, you know, the Steelers really came out um, and played extremely hard, a really good bounce back, especially from the way that last week's game kind of concluded. So uh, we'll just kind of get into, you know, some of my thoughts on both sides of the ball, the matchup, things going forward. Uh, first and foremost, I feel like we got to start with the offense, right? Um, best game of the season by far, scored 34 points, uh, the most points that they've scored uh, in a couple of seasons. Really just a couple big takeaways uh, really from that side of the ball. First and foremost, like, I mean, I've said it for a while now for you guys that have followed me on Twitter for a while. Y'all know that I was a big George Pickens fan coming out of the draft. Uh, but this dude, he's a star. And I know there's there was a lot of talk uh, over the course of the week just about some of his antics, you know, the, the non-blocking thing for Jalen Warren, how he conducted himself. I feel like in some of the interviews with the media, what have you. Um, and some of that criticism was definitely valid. I feel like some people, though, what was bugging me were projecting some of those things onto his on-field performance. Um, there is absolutely no question. There, there shouldn't be any question about Pickens' talent or I don't want to hear anything else about his production. Um, you know, this dude has been saddled with the low average to bad quarterback play uh, for two seasons now. And he just had his first thousand yard season after that monster game yesterday. Um, I'm recording this Sunday morning. Uh, four catches, 195 yards, two touchdowns. This dude is a star. Like he's a wide receiver, one absolutely phenomenal, uh, young talent. Somebody that the Steelers really should be trying to build around on offense. Um, you know, really thought that he set the tone. Obviously, first pass play of the game, the Steelers are running what's called like a dragon spacing concept. They get single high. He beats the corner off press uh, on the slant, and then he ends up. The safety takes a bad angle. He ends up taking it to the crib. I believe that's the longest uh, passing play or play from scrimmage this season, uh, NFL wide. It was like 86 yards or something like that. I saw that tweet on Twitter. Um, I'm pretty sure that's actually true. So, um, which is in general, like the ball control, deep ball catch, heck of an adjustment um, along the sideline. And then he beats uh, Chidobe Awuzie uh, on the goal ball for another 60 plus yard touchdown. I mean, the dude just flat out dominated, you know, and, and Awuzie is not a bad player. He's been a solid starting corner for quite a while now. DJ Turner, the guy who he beat on the slant, that's a young player. But, I mean, he's beating uh, these guys up pretty handily. And I just feel like, you know, a lot of the world kind of – it was good to see everybody get a glimpse of, like, just how talented he is uh, when the ball comes his way and when the ball comes his way act used in the right manner. So, um, you know, he's got some growing up to do, absolutely. You'd love to see him more – focused um but i think that that stuff will come especially as he's more integrated back into the offense also i think you got to give uh major props uh to mason rudolph just the, with the way that he played um you know the backup quarterback's always the most popular person in town and you know the, a lot of people have been clamoring for more playing time for him and he uh he made a lot of people look really smart uh for doing so you know he i think that his performance in totality was probably the best game that we've seen from a steelers quarterback over the past couple of seasons um he played extremely well like you just look at the numbers um over nine uh 9.2 total epa uh 0.3 epa per play those are elite elite figures um you know he was 47 percent success rate averaged over 10 yards per throw like i said they put up 34 points he threw for almost 300 yards um you know i, I really thought that the big thing for me with mason I, I thought in comparison to like what we've seen especially with mitch over the past couple of weeks filling in for kenny um mason's eyes were in the right spot so you know just reading things out and making quick decisions. And uh, even when things weren't there, like finding this check down quickly, like simple stuff like that, that you would expect from a guy who's been around for a little while now, like he has a veteran guy. Um, I just thought that he was really in control of the offense, played extremely well. Of course he hit some deep ball throws. I thought the receivers played extremely well. Um, you know, some of the stuff that I would say, like maybe need to get cleaned up a little bit. Some of the deep ball accuracy stuff is a little shaky. Um, but you know, in general, uh, when he was kept clean, I thought he played extremely well and moved the football. So, um, credit to Mason coming off the bench, 
playing well. Um, obviously, there's going to be a lot of takes about, you know, the quarterback situation, which we'll get to at the end of the video. But uh, like I said, big thing, though, didn't turn the ball over. Only one turnover worthy play, which was in the second half when they were already up several scores. Uh, he was a little late on an outbreaker to I think it was Deontay ball could have been picked. But um, overall, just really clean game from him. Uh, also love the scramble. I think it was like third and six in the red zone. He ended up scrambling, didn't slide. That was something I got on Mitch for a couple of weeks ago. I think it was the Patriots game slid before the first down marker. Um, I just uh, he's been around for a while. Awesome to see a guy play like that. Um, in a big spot, they really needed it. I know a lot of the Christmas corny Rudolph uh, jokes have been flying around on Twitter, but uh, it's definitely a cool storyline. So um, just moving uh, along to the rest of the offense, you know, the Steelers did a much better job. We'll talk about this mainly on defense, but did a much better job in the trenches this week. Um, one of the big things was, you know, the Steelers just have not ran the ball very well over the past, you know, over the losing streak. They haven't played very good defense. Uh, but to, uh, but Saturday was a completely different story. 5% success rate on the ground. Najee Harris, like 19 carries, uh, almost 80 yards uh, rushing, over four yards per carry. Those numbers were kind of skewed a little bit because I think there were some carries at the very end of the game that kind of dropped his average a little bit. Uh, but he got in the end zone. Didn't really see much from Jalen Warren just in terms of carrying the football uh, or catching the ball out of the backfield. I think he had one long play on a screen maybe. Um, but, you know, I thought that Warren, obviously the block that he had on Jermaine Pratt on Calvin Austin's uh, touchdown, a uh, little jet sweep was awesome to see. He also had a really crucial blitz pickup on George Pickett's second touchdown. Uh, I think they were sliding the protection to the right, and he ended up coming and uh, picking up the edge rusher off the edge. Uh, just awesome stuff. You know, Warren's a really selfless guy. I think that that's really definitely one of the, uh, one of the more easy to root for kind of guys on this Steelers team right now. Offensive line, I thought that they were better um, in this one than they had been previously. Still some things to clean up in terms of, like, stunt pickup. I thought the tackles had their struggles a little bit um, in pass pro. Uh, the Trey Hendrickson sack, in my opinion, was more of a coverage sack. I'm interested to see what the All-22 looks like for that one, but Moore was called for a really random penalty on a snatch trap move. want to go back and look at that one as well. Uh, Broderick gave up a sack on a stunt. Um, he's really struggling in pass protection. I we knew that he was raw in that regard, just in terms of some technical stuff. Uh, but him playing on the right side, I'm sure, is not doing him any favors at this moment. I thought that Cincinnati was kind of getting in his head a little bit, too. A lot of jawing after the play. Um, and you don't want to take that, like, passion away from somebody. But you would like to see him uh, be a little more consistent um, in pass pro. But he's gonna, he's taking his lumps right now. But uh, the experience is going to be valuable. I'm just really interested to see, you know, how quickly they move him back to the other side or what the plan is for left tackle because I don't think Dan Moore is going to be the starter heading into next year. I think if you're serious about upgrading the offense, you got to look at an upgrade uh, at the tackle spot. So, uh, But overall, offense hummed 6.8 yards, uh, yards per play. Uh, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, so moving on to the defensive side of the ball, turnovers. That was huge. Uh, one turnover in the past three games, we've kind of talked about in the recaps and the previews that the Steelers don't really win games unless they hold opponents under 20 points or get turnovers, and they did both today. Uh, generated a good amount of um, pressure on Browning, something that I talked about on Twitter at length. I'm not sure if I put it in the preview, but just Browning when he gets off schedule, if you force him to play out of the pocket later in the down, um, Things kind of just go haywire. His decision making kind of just goes to the bottom. Um, and I thought that that was a really clear example of that, especially on the Patrick Peterson interception that he threw in the red zone. Uh, they just forced him late in the down and he threw a bad, he made a bad decision. I'm not even really sure where he was going with that football, um, to be honest with you. But I uh, thought the backup safeties uh, deserve some recognition. Uh, Eric Rowe forced him, baited him into a ill advised throw. Uh, as a spot dropper, I think it was in cover three. It looked like the Bengals were running wide cross. He did a good job, you know, not just filling the crosser, but also baiting Browning into a, into the interception. Um, so, like, when you're down to your third, fourth string safeties, and both those guys get picks, it's pretty cool. Um, you have to really come in. Uh, their work in that regard, I thought Rowe took uh, less than ideal angles um, just in terms of tackling pursuit, but, you know, you got to kind of take what you can get with guys that are just, um, you know, coming off the practice squad. Speaking of guys that came off the practice squad, uh, Miles Jack, he looked pretty energized, man. Like, he definitely looked uh, more – I think I put it in my do's and does article for Steelers now. He looked more spry and more explosive uh, than he was last season. And I know he dealt with some injuries last year, and, you know, that, that type of uh, play that the Steelers got from Jack I don't think was really indicative of the type of player that he was in Jacksonville. Uh, but it was definitely cool to see him, uh, you know, step up, play – 
really unfortunate, man. That the Landon Roberts injury looks really serious to me. It looks like a pec injury. Those are never good. Uh, just really unlucky, to be honest with you. Like Quan, Cole, um, a Landon. All those guys were having solid seasons, and to lose all three of them before you even make it, um, you know, to the postseason is just just a really bummer, a really big bummer, um, especially because, you know, all three of those vets, uh, I felt like they did a good job overhauling the room because that's what needed to be done, and um, just even the results were perfectly fine. It's just the injury bug, just being really unlucky. Um, on the outside, I thought Joey Porter Jr. Uh, had some good moments. Uh, they played a lot of zone. I'm really interested to see what the uh, what the zone demand split was. Uh, but I felt like, you know, when he was aligned over T. Higgins, I know he shadowed him for a little bit. Higgins got his, had another 100-yard game. I think that was his fourth and fifth games against the Steelers. So ready to get that dude out of the AFC North. But I thought overall, in general, uh, when Porter was matched up with him, uh, he did a pretty solid job. Was really impressed by that tackle he made. I think it was like a quick screen in the red zone. Uh, he makes that tackle. The Steelers end up getting a stop on fourth and goal. A couple plays later, um, stuff like that, the, that's really key. You know, you'd like to see that growth. You know, Porter's had this, uh, if there are a little areas that he struggled with, you know, he hasn't been the most reliable tackler this season. So the fact that he was able to do that, uh, make that stop in a key moment was awesome to see. Um, up front, you know, the Steelers did what they did, man, like, uh, they did exactly what they did against the Bengals the first time. They just – the Bengals couldn't run the ball. Uh, if you look at the rushing success rate, 31% rushing success rate. Joe Mixon was really a non-factor, to be honest with you. Uh, there was a couple runs in the second half, I think, that he ripped off. But just overall, I felt like, you know, with the offense playing on a positive game script, getting an early lead – uh, kind of made Cincinnati one dimensional. And like when you're with a backup quarterback, we've seen that in recent weeks, what that looks like. And it's usually the results are not good. So um, stop the run first and foremost. I uh, feel like they did a good job, you know, taking away the the Bengals gap scheme, uh, those shotgun gun runs. Um, and then the edge rushers just dominated. Like that, that's that's the Steelers formula right on defense. Like when High Smith and Y can get after the passer like that. Really thought Highsmith was just beating Orlando Brown like a drum. Uh, really just – you saw the get off. You saw – that's one area where Brown is kind of soft on. Like explosive guys around the edge can get the best of him just because he's a bigger dude uh, who likes to set vertically. He likes to set inside out. And if you're a guy who can get around him like Highsmith is, you're going to have a big game. I think Highsmith had like four or five pressures, a sack. Um, the play that he made on the interception is just fantastic. The Steelers are running a little – uh, basically, they're bringing four guys, but dropping him out and bringing a, a an extra defender. Um, he drops into, I think it was like the hook zone and like cover three, it looked like. And he just feels the end breaker right behind him. And it's just like he's been so good in coverage this year. Um, honestly, like one of the best edge rushing seasons that I can remember uh, from or coverage seasons from an edge rusher that I can remember, especially in a Steelers uniform in quite some time. Like every time they dropped him into coverage, it feels like he's done some good things. I've tweeted out some examples on Twitter last night um, of just him having amazing feel and balance and coverage. It's It's been pretty cool. And it's definitely a weapon for a defensive coordinator to use. Why did exactly what you would think he would do? Uh, Jonah Williams, you know, they got into a lot. Like I said, they got into a negative game script, a lot of pure passing situations. I thought the play calling from the Bengals was a little bit questionable too early in the game but when those when he was matched up with Jonah Williams one on one why well, consistently won he drew a couple holding penalties um he had the quick sack uh, the bend on his sack was just absolutely unreal um to take down Browning there so um overall just a really good performance in the defense i don't really have any like serious qualms about like it's it's even hard to point out like constructive stuff i'm sure i'll see stuff on the tape uh, really, the only thing with the defense that, you know, they they kind of gave up some yards. Some of those were, uh, you know, in garbage time, what have you. But really, the one big play that they had, um, I may break that one down for the channel. The T. Higgins uh, slant was like 80-yard touchdown. Um, I think that was – it looked like they were playing stubby to the top, and then to the bottom they were playing cut. So it's basically cover two to the bottom. Looked like, uh, you know, he got an inside release uh, on the slant flat uh, combination from the Bengals. Uh, Browning hit him in stride. It looks like that Walker, I think they just took advantage of some of the Steelers' like tendencies or rules. Walker's been beat to the flat. Like we've talked about that in the post game. Like he's been beat to the flat for a couple touchdowns, a couple big plays in recent weeks. Uh, so instead of playing man there, they're playing zone. Well, the problem is if number two goes to the flat, you get the slant behind him. He just didn't feel it quick enough. So like he's a little bit out of position. They're playing stubby to the other side. So it's four over three. 
just in the pursuit angles on that side. So Higgins has basically a free runway and, you know, Eric Rowe at this stage of his career, isn't going to be able to keep up with a guy like that in the open field. So um, don't really have any qualms with the way really either side of the, either side of the ball played. It was just, this was the best, I feel like total team performance, maybe of the season. Um, you have to feel really good about this playoff <clears throat> playoff uh, scenario is what it is. I know, um, we talked at length about, you know, dropping those three straight really put a damper into their chances. Um, after yesterday's results, you know, the win and the blow, I think uh, New York Times had them at about 9%. Um, but it's 80% or 75 to 80% if they win out. So they got to win the next two at Seattle, at Baltimore. Those are going to be really difficult games. Who knows what's going to happen with that Baltimore game? Is Baltimore going to be playing guys, resting guys? I think they're probably going to play guys just because I personally think that San Fran is going to win uh, Monday night. But that's just my opinion. Uh, I do think Baltimore is the cleanest, most complete team in the AFC. But uh, I just think San Francisco right now is a wagon, man. Like, that's going to be a really good game. Really excited to watch that one um, play out. But obviously, who knows what's going to happen that last week of the season. You got to take care of business in Seattle. Definitely a tough place to play, a tough place that the Steelers have played. Uh, not won a lot of games or haven't won in a, quite a while um, at their place. Lots going to be made, like I said, about the quarterback uh, discussion this week about, you know, Kenny practicing, whatever, is he healthy? Like, what do they, I've already seen like a gazillion tweets, takes about, you know, who should play, whatever. I just want to say this, like, like while I do think that Rudolph's performance was the best quarterback performance we've seen the last two weeks, I do think that the decision here is really critical for the Steelers for obvious reasons. I think it's really, really difficult if Pickett is healthy and you go to Rudolph to go back to Pickett because I think that will tell us what they feel about KP moving forward more than anything else, like what could potentially happen in the off season. Cause I don't see how you can just make that decision of, okay, we're going to play the hot hand. We're going to go with Rudolph coming off this big game, pick it's healthy, but he's going to be the backup. Well, what happens in the off season? I don't, that would show me that they're not committed to him as the long-term guy. And honestly, like if you guys follow me on Twitter, have listened to me on the channel, like you guys know that I'm, I have my doubts about, some of the long-term ramifications or potential of him as a uh, starter at this point anyway. But I think the Steelers are going to be more patient with him, maybe. Uh, but we're going to see. I mean, I, I think that, like I said, I think the decision this week will tell us what we need to know in terms of how they're going to move forward in the offseason. And that's honestly like, more important to me than anything else because I'm really curious about uh, the direction of the franchise, what they're going to do at the quarterback position. Because like I said, man, like with the Pickens thing, yesterday was a perfect reminder of they've got some weapons, man. Like they, they've got dudes. Like George Pickens is a really good player. Deontay Johnson, good player. Like they've got good players on offense. There's some things that they got to clean up, especially in pass protection along the offensive line. They got to get some development for some young guys. They probably need an extra piece, like I said, a tackle. But this is offense. It's not devoid of talent. Like this is not like you're watching the Panthers. All right. This is this is different. Um, and I feel like so many people on Twitter, especially social media, are kind of trying to gaslight people into thinking that this Steelers offense isn't good. And it's it's not good, but they have some players. Uh, the big problem has been the scheme, in my opinion, and the quarterback play. Those two things have been the biggest issues um, on offense more than anything else. Um, but like I said, man, I don't I, I could see things going either way with Rudolph or Pickett starting. Obviously, the big thing is Kenny's going to have to be healthy. So can he make it through this week of practice? What's his ankle look like? Like I said, if, I think that Kenny, if if he's going to be, if you still think that he's the guy moving forward for the long term, you need to get him these two games experience wise so that you can have two more games, two more sets of snaps to evaluate him as a starter. All right. So you know what you got going into the offseason. Now, if you're already having question marks about like we don't know or we're on the fence or maybe they're maybe the Steelers are already leaning maybe one way of saying like, all right, like this, we don't we think we need to upgrade the quarterback position. Then I have no problem with going with Mason. Like if he, if he if he gives you the best chance to win and that is what it is and you want to ride the hot hand, so be it. All right. But I do think it's difficult from a messaging standpoint for them to go to Mason if Kenny's healthy and then say like, OK, well, Kenny's going to sit the next two weeks and then he's still going to be the starter next year. That to me is a really difficult message, not just for everyone in the room, uh, like in the locker room, but obviously to the fan base, everything else. So it's going to be a really interesting week. There's going to be a lot of takes flying out. Um, we'll just have to see what happens, man. Like I said, I'm very interested to see uh, the decision there from Tomlin. He was non-committal after the game. If you guys didn't catch the press conference. Um, but overall, out of the way the guys fought, um, you know, they they 
they played extremely well, showed up in a big game. Cincinnati, like I said, had a lot to lose. And I thought Steelers played out. Uh, they were tougher, more physical, more well-prepared. Um, just really pr- fun performance to see them go out, play play well at a high level when it's been, you know, a month since, you know, we've seen that caliber of play. So um, last but not least, it's holiday season. Merry Christmas to you guys. I appreciate everybody's uh, support on the channel. Support my work at Steelers now. Support me on Twitter. All the stuff that y'all do, uh, it does not go unnoticed. Um, so enjoy. Steelers got a dub Sunday. Full slate of uh, football games. Enjoy the games. Um, just make sure on your way out, if y'all do me a favor, like, subscribe, comment, uh, turn on notifications, all that stuff. It's greatly appreciated on my end. And I will check you guys with some more content uh, this week. Like I said, enjoy your Christmas. Um, happy holidays.